2,000 meters beneath the surface. That is only 20% of the ocean's total depth. We can go far deeper, and what appears along the way is hard to believe. At 2,000 meters, or two kilometers, you expect total darkness because no sunlight reaches this far. Yet tiny lights begin to glow in the black. You have entered the bioluminescent zone, where nearly 90% of sea life produces light, just to survive. One creature here is the abyssal dragonfish, a small, terrifying hunter with teeth said to be five times sharper than a piranha's, now dropped to 3,800 meters. This legendary depth holds the wreck of the Titanic, the real ship lying silent and broken almost 4,000 meters down. Keep going. At 5,000 meters, you enter the abyssal zone. Think we were deep before? This is about the average depth of the world's oceans. Life is barely hanging on. You find strange sea cucumbers, giant glowing jellyfish the size of humans, and long-legged abyssal crabs. Go farther to 6,000 meters into the Hadal Zone. This place is hell underwater. The water temperature never rises above 4 degrees, and the pressure is said to be more than 1,100 times greater than on land. Imagine carrying 335 full-grown African elephants on your shoulders. Now, flip the view from the deepest point to the highest. Mount Everest stands at 8,848 meters, the tallest thing we have, and yet Everest could fit inside some ocean trenches and still not reach the bottom. In 2012, director James Cameron made a solo dive to 10,898 meters and stayed for three hours. He described it as a lunar desert with no life, no movement, only the sound of his sub creaking under pressure. And in 1960, two men went even deeper, reaching 10,960 meters, nearly 11 kilometers straight down. That is the same altitude commercial planes fly at, except instead of soaring through clouds, they sank into black silence. So the next time you jump into the ocean, remember you are swimming above a world almost no one has seen.